well again it's Cliff here. Um, so after that rather sad episode with the problem with the uh, sensor, um, let's start afresh now. Um, set up and using uh, my new rapid turn on a production job, making a, a bunch of these little parts and uh, all's going well. Let's get into it. Okay I'm just getting my new rapid turn up and running now and um, just showing you a couple of little details. I didn't mention in my last video I needed to cut a thread on the end of the ER22 5C uh, adapter collet holder. I tend to use Arbor for everything, don't I? Um, this is how I mount the uh, guard on. I just put a couple of uh, acetal uh, standoffs there, replacing a couple of the screws to get the height. And then um, I'm not getting seasick while I'm doing this one armed work. And then I can screw that cover on there. Oh, you'll see it later on. Um, actually got it painted about the right colour because I just got a bit tired of looking at the galvanised steel. It's just occurring to me when I'm getting this all up and running. You know, I've sounded a bit uh, negative at times about rapid turn and, and I feel a bit guilty about that in a way. You know, one of the um, personality traits of us engineers is that we're inclined to be a bit negative. Um, and, and there's good reasons for that. I mean, we, we have to be critical of every little fault. We have to focus on what is wrong rather than what's right. If, if um, a, a piece of equipment is 99% right, it still may not work. And so over the years, we get trained to be focusing on what's wrong. And that's a, um, an inevitable consequence of, of, of engineering and it, and it tends to affect your personality and social situations too which is not a good thing but anyway um, there's a lot of good things about rapid turn you know value for money you get CNC turning capacity capability for under two thousand US of dollars I mean that's a bargain you can do uh, with, with the uh, gang tooling setup that I've been working on, you can do production machining of CNC parts for under two thousand dollars. It's great. It's a it's a neat little unit. It's got good bearings and well well designed and well built. Ninety nine percent. So I must um, draw a line in the sand and say it is a good little unit. And um, I'm really hopeful that um, it, it will sell well and be successful. And that these couple of little clouds that have been gathering over it in recent months will blow away and it will turn out to be really successful. Okay that's the cover on. Um, I just realized I just said uh, being trying to be positive about rapid turn and it's got good bearings but I don't know that. It's just wishful thinking. They may be good bearings. Um, they're a good distance apart and they're fairly big angular contact bearings and so that's good I guess maybe I was thinking that. Um, there's a really clever adjustment here on the base plate of rapid turn for those of you who are unaware of it. There's an eccentric pin here and a fixed pin further along which engages in the T-slot and I can show you the movement here. I've got a dial indicator on the head. So when I turn that eccentric pin you can see it pivots the whole headstock around on the base plate and that allows you to quickly align it by traversing the Y movement across here to quickly align it on this machine surface uh, which is uh, probably quite closely at right angles to the spindle center line so that gets the spindle center line in line with the mill X axis. Um, so. Uh, it's so just a pity that these nuts here are too close to these legs and they're a bit awkward to get at and also it's not in the best position. It would be better if the whole headstock was back a little bit further. It would give you more capacity. So I probably won't be using this um, locking and adjusting mechanism long term. But still, you know, compliments to Tomac for the thought they put into that adjustment procedure. Um, maybe on a Mark II version they can find a way to shift it back a bit further. I'll have to do that mod at some stage if I get a big job for it. I'm just slipping the gang tooling platform into position now 
and I wanted to find an easy and safe way of doing it so that I'm not straining my back trying to lift it into place. So I put a couple of long cap screws in there and there just to guide the screws in alignment and some polystyrene blocks rather than hard wood or, um, or um, steel blocks and that way I can come down with the head and you can see it's coming down now um, and that way I'm not straining or risking straining the ball screw system um, if it was hard wood and it jams slightly on an angle um, there'd be nowhere for it to go but strain the ball screw system but this way if it jams you'll see the polystyrene compressing um, so I can just go down far enough and then cinch up the cap screws and so on so then we can pop in a couple of shorter cap screws just to retain the guidance and then you just come down the rest of the way and um, you, you're just going to crush the expanded polystyrene rather than cause a jam and a strain to the ball screw system. They work well. The Tormac manual says to clock the uh, headstock in alignment by working on this machined face on the end of the headstock. But of course that relies on how accurately that surface is machined. It's better to take it off the front face of the adapter flange because you can check that that is perfectly concentric by rotating the uh, spindle. And, and if it is, then that shows that it's, um, and this is an exact right angle, and if it isn't, you can machine it with a tool take a couple of thou cut to get it exactly true and then you, if you rotate it you'll know you've got an exact right angle and and that's what they call a generated right angle rather than a, a right angle based on the accuracy of a gauge or a machine surface and now if we traverse it okay. and zoom in on that Now if we traverse the Y, you can see it's pretty close. And um, I, I did have to tweak it slightly um, differently than the machine surface. So this is a, making this adjustment here. Um, so when I clocked it up on that surface, um, it wasn't quite as accurate as doing it this way, but you know, not a lot, only a thou or two, and um, I'm trying to be less critical. <laughs> it's pretty good. I think I've gone through this way of setting tools quickly before in other videos. Um, as you get a bit of aluminium uh, here, split it in half exactly, use a square and rotate it until it's that machined face is vertical and then um, move across with your y-axis um, with a bit of paper in it until it's just biting and, and then you point one or four foul away measure your paper first um, and that way uh, it gets it pretty close and if you have a slip up well it's only aluminium so nothing's going to be damaged and then you can set your X you're already on the Y so this is not so critical now but you set it approximately horizontal for example with a ruler or something and then just come down with your X until you're just biting on your bit of paper and so on. So it's a quite a quick way to get it pretty close. Well now I've got rapid turn going I've just started making these little parts. Again a settle, again not highly critical I've yet to test it for that. Just seem to be getting all this type of work at the moment. So this is just um, using my gang tooling blocks here. So I've got tool one which is a high speed steel tool which I've used a quick change tool post for. I've got a parting off tool here 
and a threading tool here and I've just ground one up out of uh, high speed steel so it's just running between those three gang positions this is all um, conversational programmed with very little editing just putting in a couple of Y positions really easy to use um, and really pleased with it Rapid turn. That about wraps up that episode. Thanks for watching, guys. My hopes for rapid turn are soaring again. Cheers. Okay.